Every modern household has a ton of gadgets. And what else do they have? A ton of wall warts, plugs, and chargers. So today, we're going to build something to house all that stuff, keep it organized, and make it look pretty good too. Now what I've got here is my prototype gadget station that I built about two years ago. It's a nice little unit, gets the job done, but there's a lot of improvements that we can make. And before I get into that, let me show you some of the things that I, I decided on. Now, the one that I modeled this after, I saw something I believe was called an Enook on the internet that was more or less a standing wall hung unit that you could fold down the front and put a laptop on there and type away and have a good time, uh, but also store a bunch of other things on the inside. And uh, that's kind of what I modeled this after. Okay, so we've got some hinges here that allow the front to drop down. You have a nice wide work surface. Uh, I added some extra support here with these chains. Uh, we've got enough shelving units to store a number of gadgets. And you can see there's holes in the back where you could feed the cords down. Okay, so plenty of storage inside. On the bottom is another shelf. Oops. And this is where you store a surge protector. And the great thing about this is if all the plugs are plugged into here, you could just turn them off when you're not charging everything and you don't have that sort of trickle charge that you uh, accumulate over time. And really, it's kind of causing a lot of households to, uh, to pay a lot more in their electric bills than they probably should. So you just shut everything off and it's all done. But the key thing is that you're hiding everything in the bottom in a compartment that's never seen. All you see is up, uh, up top, all the gadgets. Now, if you look at the back, Now excuse the duct tape, I did that just to kind of hold the wires in place. The wires come down and I've got a, a amount of about three quarters of an inch to work with here. The problem with that is a lot of cords won't fit through that hole and be able to go down and into the bottom compartment, which means I have to take this off of the wall anytime I want to add something new to it. And that is not a good thing. That's definitely something I want to change. So the French cleat that I have here is a 45 degree angle that hangs onto another cleat that sits on the wall. That works very well, but we have to figure out a way to get that French cleat, but also have more space here so that the next unit will be able to put those cords in without taking this piece off of the wall. Now the overall design, well, I, can, I think I can do better. I don't, I don't even know why I did this. I don't, like, am I trying to lock Nicole out of this thing or what? But I, I think I was just having fun. I put the keys and the locks on there just because I thought maybe we might sell this product and maybe people would want to lock their stuff in there. So the keys are there. What are you going to do? Now, interestingly enough, the unit that we're about to build is going to somebody pretty special. Uh, it's Leo Laporte. And if you're not familiar with Leo, Google his name and you'll find plenty of information about him. Um, he happens to be somebody that Nicole has idolized for years now. And uh, let you in on a little secret. This is just a little bribe so that we can meet him in person. Uh, so yeah, a little bit of pressure because we're making it a little bit more high profile than we normally would with our furniture. Uh, but he's, he's just a, a all around tech guy who's probably got tons of gadgets and is the perfect test subject for a piece of furniture like this. And I can't think of a better person to give it to. So uh, yeah, wish me luck. So the first thing I did when uh, embarking on the design of the second version of this thing uh, was look at the first one. I mean, you can learn a lot uh, when you have this prototype in hand and you can kind of see what worked, what didn't work, what was a good idea, what was a bad idea. Um, so what I did was I opened it up and I started looking around. Is the depth okay? Is the width, the height, is all of that acceptable? The number of shelves, do I need more? Do I need less? Um, is this a good idea? You know, this platform here. In reality, I never even put a lap, for a picture, I guess I put a laptop on there uh, to take a photo, but Beyond that, we never use this as a laptop surface, and it just is probably not the most practical solution for people. Uh, the other thing is, when you put a screw into plywood like I have here, that is really gonna put a lot of strain on that plywood, and eventually, this chain is probably just gonna pop right out. So ultimately, I wanna remove this whole thing altogether and just put some doors on the front and focus on the fact that this is just for organizing gadgets, not for putting a computer on here. Uh, you know, other things are the, could we have done better with the cord management than just drilling some holes? At the back, we talked about that earlier, giving myself more room so that I can actually put a cord through here, fish it down, and then pull it into the bottom compartment without removing this whole thing from the wall. Now, 
Once you have that functionality satisfied, you have the shell in your mind of this feature has to be here, this is how the shelves are gonna be secured, this is how the whole case is going to be built, then it's a question of decorative things. What do you want it to look like? And this is where there are no rules. As long as you satisfy the functionality, um, you're free to do whatever you wanna do that makes you happy. Uh, so at that point, you've pretty much got a blank slate. And what do you do? That's usually, uh, I think the most intimidating part for people is when they have a blank piece of paper and they haven't drawn anything yet and making that first pencil stroke and writing down that first idea tends to be the most challenging part. So what I like to do is I like to take some of that pressure off of myself. I mean, there are tons of artists and uh, woodworkers and builders and things out there who have done this great work. And all that work is out there to influence you and to give you inspiration for what to do with your projects. I think the biggest mistake a lot of people make, and I've done this too, is thinking that creativity has to be making something from nothing. You know, you have to make a completely unique idea that's never been thought of and no one will ever think of it again. Um, and that's just not true. I think you can look at a lot of the stuff. I've got uh, Krenov's Impractical Cabinet Maker here, I've got Box Making Basics, and Arts and Crafts Furniture. Three books that I looked at uh, to give me inspiration for this project. Now, I'm not saying I opened this, said, oh, that looks good, I'm gonna copy that. Of course not. I saw something, maybe it's the angle of a leg, maybe it's the way a door is designed, and it excites you, and you say, maybe I'm gonna incorporate that into my final piece, and you write that idea down, or you draw it. Um, so that's really, I don't know, again, I, 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 you know, maybe it comes from my uh, being brought up in sort of a scientific um, community, where everything is built upon the work of your uh, predecessors and the people who came before you. That's how it gets to be as advanced as it is. And I think when it comes to furniture and design, I don't think there's anything to be ashamed of. If some great artist made a great piece and I could take an element of that and turn it into something else and have it blossom into this beautiful new project, why the heck not, you know? So anyway, that's kind of what I do and that's where I started. So let me take you through my process. I have a few sketches and things and you know what, that's what I recommend doing. Write the stuff down, write down in words if you have to, your ideas, draw some sketches down and it's just pencil and paper. If you don't like it, you can erase it. And uh, you know, I'm gonna show you the process I took, some of my actual sketches, and I'll show you how I went from those early sketches, developed the idea into two or three different versions, and how I finally arrived at the final piece. So let's take a look at that. After reading a few books, the first thing that caught my eye was this Krenov cabinet. I love the way that the side extends above the top, and the solid wood is carved to a very nice cove profile. But here was the problem. At this point, I was convinced that the piece needed to be made out of plywood, so how would I do that carved profile? So I started playing with the thought of applying a substantial block to the top of the side pieces, and instead of trying to make it look like one continuous piece, I would celebrate the fact that it was different, maybe even use a contrasting species of wood. I went so far as to draw out the front view and the top view, but in the end, I just couldn't wrap my head around it. Now this next design definitely has more of a Japanese influence. The edges of the top would be carved to a thin upturn and the base would be given a significant cove. Now you can see that the side has a pattern routed into it that would allow for increased airflow into the cabinet. The front doors feature an unusual rail and style arrangement and ultimately this whole design just didn't excite me. I was afraid that the top would be too fragile and the piece was just a bit too much of a foreign architecture statement. <laughs> The next thing I did was look through the finewoodworking.com gallery. I came across this piece by Richard Koto, and sorry about that Richard if that's not how you pronounce your name. What struck me the most about this piece was the legs. I just love the way that they stand proud above the bottom and the top of the case, and the curvature on the outside would give me a lot of cool options. So the question is how to incorporate that concept into my cabinet. And here's what I came up with. You notice that the doors are right off my last concept drawing. I did like those. A design like this gives me lots of options for details. But before I get too far ahead of myself, I had to consider some basic construction issues. For instance, how would I hide the plywood edges? The solution for that was to just use solid wood. The main box itself can be assembled much like a drawer, with dovetails or fingers joints at the corners. 
The top and bottom pieces would be notched to allow for the legs, and the sides would be joined to the legs so that they meet flush on the inside of the case. The reason for the notch is to bring the top and bottom of the case out far enough to accommodate inset doors and perhaps even knife hinges. And the back panel would be assembled out of several individual pieces. Each piece would support a shelf and leave a little space above it for passing the cords through. And after a few hours of hacking my way through SketchUp, I came up with this. Now, I still have lots of details to work out, like the top of the legs, and most of the curves aren't exactly what I want, but it's close enough. Notice how in the back, the legs only have a curve cut into the side, because the back needs to sit flush against the wall. The bottom line here is that all proportions are worked out, and I have enough information to place an order for the wood. All in all, it took about three days to design this piece. So you might be wondering, why so long? Well, it wasn't exactly three days of drawing and sketching. Much of the time was spent just letting the concept drawing simply exist for a while. A lot of times, the design that looks awesome the minute that I draw it holds a lot less appeal the following day. Now here's the coolest part about this project. I want to invite you guys to build along with me. Now I don't want you to build the same exact cabinet because really mine's not even done yet and the video is going to lag behind real time so that's not really going to work. And I think on the end table project I tried getting some feedback but the problem was by the time the video was out I had already gone several steps beyond that point and I couldn't incorporate anybody's ideas. But in this case I'm not asking for feedback on mine necessarily. I want to see what you guys are doing and how you solve these problems and we could sort of have a forum uh, of exchanging ideas on how to tackle these challenges. And then also, I just can't wait to see what you guys come up with to sort of turn what is a simple design and a simple box into something beautiful, ornate, uh, whatever your tastes are and whatever matches the decor of your home. And the bottom line is, I think all of us could probably use a gadget station in our house. But the idea is not to make it look techy. You don't want to make it look like a piece of electronics. It's a piece of furniture. And no one even knows what's inside those doors until you open it and you go, whoa, that is really cool. So let's review some of the challenges that you're going to confront here. First of all, uh, the inside of this unit is going to be subject to a lot of heat. All of these electronics are going to produce heat. And, uh, and the cords and the, the wall warts and things in the bottom, those are going to generate heat. So you have to figure out a way to have good air exchange. And I dropped the ball when I designed this one because there's just a few holes in the back. That's just not enough. So my second design will incorporate something that allows more air to get into the unit. The other thing you want to be concerned with is cord management. The cords go through here, they you know, feed down to the bottom, but it's a lot more than that. You've got to figure out how much room to allow yourself so that most cords can go through and fall down without taking the unit off the wall. And you've got to come up with some system, you know, holes like this is okay, but I think I could probably come up with something better that disguises the cords a little bit more so it's not as much of an eyesore. You know, the other thing is you want to keep the general organization of the entire inside in mind. Now, there's a lot of different electronics, and depending on what you plan on storing in here, that's going to determine whether this thing needs to be more shallow, whether it needs to be wider, taller, whatever. Um, you also want to make sure that you don't lock yourself down to a particular design. Let's say, you know, this is your favorite camera right now. Well, don't you know, design a cradle that holds that camera perfectly because in five years that may not be your favorite camera anymore. So you want it to, uh, you know, sort of grow with you as your electronics. And you know what, by nature, these things are meant to be upgraded. So you're going to go through them a lot over the course of your lifetime. So it's nice to have something that can grow uh, with you. And overall, it just needs to look good. You need to take something simple and turn it into something beautiful. And sometimes there's beauty and simplicity, so don't be afraid of doing that either. Um, so I hope you'll build one along with us. Let's keep in touch. Let's um, sort of communicate back and forth. And if you don't have a blog of your own to display the pictures, just send them to me. I would love to post them on the website and show everybody the progress that you've made so far. Uh, so good luck, and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Thanks for watching.